Hello, my little Luxes. I'm your host, Charcy Lux, and this is another episode of Luxy Charms. And this is one of the ones that I've been wanting to do for a while, but just haven't worked up the courage to actually do this, which would be a get ready with me as I put on some makeup and everything. And I at least have my base down first just because it's like I didn't know how long this was going to take. I kept thinking, you know, this is the type of video that I've been wanting to do for quite some time because obviously being a part of the cosplay world and costumes and makeup and everything, especially cosplay makeup, it's something that I enjoy doing and it's very therapeutic for me. But kept thinking, why is it so nerve-wracking for me to get in front of a camera and to just do my makeup? I have a weird, strange condition that I wanted to kind of just open up and talk with you all while I try some new products that I've recently bought. I have a very strange condition that is very rare, like a very small percentage of the world has it, as far as I know, only like 1% it's called hyperhidrosis and it's just now recently coming to the point where more and more people are talking about it and learning about it and knowing what it is and basically especially in scientific terms for knowing what hyperhidrosis is which it's hyperactive sweating my hands and my feet sweat without my control it's a nervous twitch i guess something that's inherited I inherited it from my father's side of the family. My father told me years ago that he believes his grandmother, either his great-grandmother or his grandmother had the condition because he always remembers that she had cold, wet hands. One of my cousins, I should say, on my dad's side of the family, she also got the condition. Obviously, I'm older than her, so I had it before her. Well, just come to find out that another one of my cousins on the same side of the family, he has a son and he's just now been developing it and he's about nine, ten years old. Might not be able to see it right now, but my hands get sweaty from time to time and it's one of those things where I've grown up with it pretty much my entire life. So while I'm talking, I should be smart and be working on some makeup and that. In the wintertime, it sucks because I'm cold, constantly cold. I was about fourth, fifth grade when it first started showing up. So any products that I'm using here, um, I'll put it in my description box for everybody, just so you kind of know what products I'm using and not that it matters for everybody, but to anybody that's going to be curious about what I am using for my products and what am I doing. Right now I'm just kind of adding some eye primer to my eyes. Helps to keep the eye makeup in place. Yes, there are a lot of different forms of hyperhidrosis and one of the worst ones out there is that you can get it to where it goes through your entire body, which I can't imagine that. Like, I'm uncomfortable with it in my hands. There's forms that can be as mild to where it's just a mild inconvenience because your hands are kind of moist and wet, whereas mine, like, when I get to certain points, it can literally be dripping down my hand and, of course, unfortunately for my feet, too. It's easier to kind of take care of when it's in my feet because of the fact that of course in your feet you can wear socks. In the summertime I've only recently been getting more comfortable with wearing sandals and open shoes but I've had to learn that you know you have to wear ones that actually uh, close because if I wore just like flip-flops for example they go flying off my feet. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do so <laughs> kind of a funny thing especially if you know at the pool at least you can hide it a little better at the pool because your feet are wet from swimming anyways. Like I had said, I was wanting to try some new makeup products at the same time as doing this. And um, it's a brand that's called She Glam, but it's their chromosome. It's dual chrome makeup, but I mean, the stuff is like stunning. And so I was pretty excited to try it. We'll see how messy I am with, while doing this. But so, as I said before, 
my hyperhidrosis showed up when I was pretty young. I was in, I want to say fourth, fifth grade when it first showed up because I remember I was so embarrassed about it and obviously back then no one knew what it was and of course me growing up in a small midwestern town you kind of unfortunately get picked on. My mom trying to help out and I mean she was really sweet about everything that she tried doing and trying to come up with ways that it'd be less embarrassing for me because my mom growing up she kind of she understood the same thing like she went through small town midwestern being picked on all the time and she would do these cute things where she would find these really fun like little hand towels and things like that to where they had like pictures of like teddy bears or any other thing that I liked and she would try the trick with um baby powder so as you can imagine with a uh, baby powder and me trying to think that this was going to be a cure for stopping my hands from sweating caking caking my hands in baby powder and lord, it, it, as you can imagine um if you've ever seen that old uh show friends now I'm feeling my age by saying that that old show, which I grew up with, uh, but there's a scene with uh, Ross's character where he is trying to put on a leather pair of pants so that he looks cool for this girl. And he's sweaty and he can't get them back on. So he puts on like lotions and baby powder and all he does is end up making a paste on his legs instead of getting these stupid pants back up on his... <laughs> Well, me, uh, yeah, I would make this weird paste on my hands because, you know, if you just keep adding baby powder to your hands that have no control and just keep sweating, as you can imagine that within a certain amount of time, it was me trying to uh, just go to the bathroom and wash my hands and just try and get this weird white paste off of my hands. So, of course, we move into um, the point in time where I would be in junior high. As you guessed it, hormones get really bad. So with hormones on the rise and with my nerves, because there are certain things that will activate hyperhidrosis and make it even worse. If you are nervous, if you are stressed, uh, exercise, eating, eating actually can intensify it as well. Obviously, when you get to junior high and you're already a shy, weird kid anyways, because, you know, kid that can't control their uh, hands from sweating, I'm probably about, I want to say, 13, 14 years old, and your hormones fully kick in and everything is even more awkward and strange, because, you know, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, it didn't help that I was nerdy on top of that, but of course back then that wasn't cool thing. Whatever. Back in the day, we used to have a thing called computer class. Because this was back when they were just starting to put computers in all the classrooms and that. The junior high just had a separate room that was dedicated to being the computer room. So had a computer class, but there were not enough computers in the classroom to sustain an entire class. They would put you in pairs. You would have a partner in these computer classes. And of course you can just imagine where I'm going with this story. And the whole entire time I'm just thinking, I'm like, oh dear God, I, I don't want to swap places with this other student. I get stuck being paired up with one of the girls who back then was considered one of the popular girls, one of the cool girls. I was hoping I'd be able to pair up with one of my friends. Well, unfortunately, that's not how it worked out. And the teacher kind of decided who got paired with who because he didn't want people goofing around. So I was paired up with this one girl. Maybe if I go 
after her, it wouldn't be so bad, but no, of course, it's one of those where you're working on a program, it'd be like keyboarding or something silly, or that if you can remember those mathematic equation things where it's literally a game and you do math equation, equations to try and advance, well, you know, could make it to where she goes first and then I can go after her and then save myself the embarrassment of the fact of sweating all over the keyboard and then have that thought process of somebody using it after me. Well, that's not how this class worked. So that's not the idea that this teacher had for this program. That his idea was that one student would do the program first, and then as soon as that student was done with that program, you'd move to the next student, and they'd do the same program. And then as soon as we were done, then we'd switch back. So you had to switch back and forth between the different programs instead of just letting one person go, which I mean, yes, in retrospect, looking back on it, it makes more sense and it's more fair so that you keep going down the line of the programs instead of one person going through all the programs and then switching to the next student and going all the way through. Of course, it makes more sense, but not too poor little shy me freaking out because guess what? As soon as... That is very noisy case but dear god that is the the case itself though is completely gorgeous like i love how compact it is uh, but it's just a little squeaky when you open it closer but as you can tell where my story is gonna go with this is that as soon as i had switched with her back to the other program here's this girl as soon as we switch it back has to put in her awful, awful input about, oh my God, what is wrong with you? Like, why is this keyboard wet? And of course me trying to hide my hands and the whole time she's just like, what is wrong with you? Like, what is that? That's disgusting. And of course I'm trying so hard not to start like bawling my eyes out. Cause it's like, this isn't something I can control, and back then we didn't know what the heck it was. So me being told by some girl that's also one of the popular girls, what's wrong with you? Why are you gross? This is disgusting. I mean, that was pretty mortifying, especially only being like 13, 14 years old. <sighs> I just kind of said, well, oh, it's just something that I've had my entire life. I don't know what it is. My hands just sweat. I, I can't control it. And of course, me looking back on it now, I apologized to her. Like I was apologizing to her profusely, like I'm so sorry, I, I just, I can't help it. And it gets worse when I'm nervous. And it's like, she just starts making fun of me. And it's like, I look back on it now. This girl was literally bullying me for a condition that I can't control that basically is kind of like a disability because I can't control it. It's something that's a part of me, something I inherited. And yeah, thanks for making fun of something that is essentially something that I can't treat and that nobody had a name for back then. And like I said, it's only been recently that it's come to light that anyone's even been able to figure out what hyperhidrosis even is growing up with it and basically me training myself on how to deal with this condition because it is it's embarrassing like you can imagine me like going on first dates and never ever wanting to hold my significant other's hand because god forbid you know you sweat on them but i mean it kept me as a pretty uh shy unfortunately a very introverted kid very different from my personality now after time that i stopped caring so much but you know there's still certain things that it will get to me and bother me when you move into uh, high school you get to learn driver's ed i was lucky in the fact that it was during the colder months and winter and i started learning to wear gloves but I remember that first few times, it was in the fall, so of course, it wasn't cold. So I 
couldn't wear the gloves in that. And it's right in front of my face. You go into driver's ed. You can imagine how high nerves are there. And me already being such a fun, awkward little kid. When we first start school in the fall, it's actually in August, which in August and September, you can still get some pretty warm months. But when you're nervous and you're driving in the driver's ed car, and oh dear God, you have to switch with other students again. And so I started hiding like paper towels or washcloths in my pocket so that when we'd switch drivers, I would somehow, or just you try and use my shirt as much as possible to try and wipe down the freaking steering wheel. But yeah, as you can imagine, like my hands would sweat so bad that guess what? <laughs> it was dripping down the steering wheel. Nobody else in my school that I knew of had hyperhidrosis and I'd never heard of it from anywhere of anybody having it, or if they did, they just hid it better than me. I was believed in the winter time because you can wear gloves. So it's much easier to hide. My hands can be so bad that it doesn't take much for me to, like I can soak a paper towel within minutes, like when it's at its worst, and I'm not even joking. So you can imagine how gross and damp my gloves were after doing driver's ed. <laughs> Which, that should be another story for another time anyways, because uh, our driver's ed teacher, super cringe. Ugh, disgusting, disgusting man. Very sexist, too. But, uh, so I also started learning tricks, because, you know, you kind of have to. One of the tricks that I had learned was that I used to take index cards or folded pieces of paper that I would use if I was writing notes or taking a test. Because once again, if I could soak a paper towel or even a washcloth, because there was even times I would use just regular hand towels or washcloths, but I could soak those within minutes at my worst. And of course, going through high school and being a nervous little girl, it didn't take much. So I started getting good at carrying index cards around with me. So <laughs> when I would have tests or quizzes, or like I said, just regular being in class taking notes, I would have an index card right under my uh, the palm of my hand and <laughs> be writing with this stupid index card and I'd have to switch it out every so often because otherwise I would sweat all over my notes or the piece of paper that I was taking my test on. <laughs> it's like, guess what? If your note, like your notepad is wet, you're not writing notes, you're just tearing that piece of paper. Not, not fun. Definitely not fun. Carried it with me all the way until college. So obviously it was doing the exact same tricks that I was doing in college. I was gonna say the shiny one's not laying down as nice as what I would like it to lay down, but it might be because I had the other one on there first. I'm gonna try it with my finger and see if that works a little better. Oh yeah, works so much better with my finger. Not so well with a brush though. A lot of fallout though. Unfortunately, a lot of fallout. My saving grace is my Arcanon because as soon as I started dating him and I told him like immediately about the condition, ugh, stabbed myself, and um, he didn't care. Like he understood, but by then I had learned what it was. I was a sophomore in high school when I was dating a guy and he started looking up my condition. And that's back when they first started figuring out that hyperhidrosis was a thing. And they finally were starting to diagnose it. He had come to me and he had actually was the first one who came to me and brought the term hyperhidrosis to me. He was the one that at least opened up the door for me to start learning about it, figuring out that there were different things they could do for it. Uh, apparently Botox is one of those things that you could do for it because yeah, no, uh, every so often you would have to go and get Botox injected 
straight into your hands and or feet, depending where you had it. And um, yeah, I hear, I hear it's like one of the most painful things you can go through, just injecting Botox into your hands. And the fact that it only lasts for like maybe a week, maybe two if you're lucky, and then you have to keep going. Not only is it painful and you have to do it twice a month, it's expensive, like extremely expensive. And so no, that, that obviously wasn't an option for me. And there are surgeries for it, but the thing is, is that it's, it's not a cure, it's just a treatment and it doesn't guarantee that it's going to work. And there are, 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 there are side effects to it as well that yes, they can get it to where maybe your hands and your feet stop sweating, but you might get a secondary spot that picks up sweating instead. So in other words, it could end up being in your armpits. It's because like I said, there's different forms of hyperhidrosis. So if you have really sweaty armpits that just sweat uncontrollably and doesn't matter what kind of deodorant you use or products, you most likely have hyperhidrosis in your armpit. And one of the other secondary ones they said is that you could have uncontrolled sweating like on your thigh area was a common one. <laughs> like, oof, sweating in my hands, sweating in my thighs, sweating in my hands, sweating in my thighs. I don't know. I don't know which one's better. So my family was Protestant and I was raised Protestant. Well, at the church we went to, at the end of every service, they would do a greeting. Let me tell you, to a little girl that, oof, keep hitting myself in the face, to a little girl that's already embarrassed about having to shake hands with anybody because my least favorite thing to do was to have any kind of contact with people and I hated shaking hands. So at the end of every service for this greeting, you would of course shake everybody's hand, do a little greeting and all that fun jazz, which, you know, seems like a sweet thing, but <laughs> to someone like me, hated it because every time I would get the same shit every time. And it doesn't even matter if it was the same person I would have seen the previous week or whatnot. It was always like, oh, your hands are so cold and clammy. It finally got to the point where I looked at my mom when the end of the service would start happening and kept like begging her like to let me sit at the back, let me be at the end of the pew so that at the end of the service I could sneak out. And of course with them, they're like, no, you have to do that. And it's like, I. Finally, it was literally in tears begging my mom, like, please don't, don't make me shake people's hands. Like, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. And I'm like, I hate people talking about it. And it's like, I can't, I can't control this. If I'm not comfortable, don't, don't make me do it. Obviously, when I become an adult and with college and that, and I slowly, slowly stop caring because let's face it, it's not overnight that you learn to just ignore your embarrassments or to get over your hurdles or your fears, that kind of shit. As nice as it is to think that, you know, it happens only within like a year or so. No, mine has been a lifetime of me finally learning to stop caring what other people think of me and also going through like some of the worst things you can go through in life to finally say that, you know what, it doesn't matter. Arkanon and I got married very young but we are very blessed that through all of our problems, because obviously we're not perfect. When the number one thing is, well, there's two things that <laughs> people come to us because they're like, we've been together so long. I have two things. I don't give out advice because what works for me and Arcanon is not going to work for you. I've learned that over time because I used to give advice. And nine times out of ten, people don't listen to you anyways because, you know, I used to take offense back then. So I just learned, you know, I'm not gonna give advice because people don't take it anyway. And the second one is, is that we're not perfect. So nothing drives me more nuts than when people are like, you're the perfect couple. Barf, <laughs> no one's perfect. Nobody's a perfect couple. And anybody that tells you we are, they are, they're lying to you and give them about two years, they're gonna be divorced or separated. It happens more than you know. Anywho, in 2007, 
Arcanon and I uh, get married and it was really sweet because my mom, knowing that I was very nervous about certain things, she made me a special little handkerchief for me to use for my wedding day because obviously, you know, your wedding day is a very special day but also very uh, nerve-wracking at the same time. She made me this special handkerchief that I could wrap around my bouquet and that so if my hands started sweating that at least I could be a little more comfortable than having it just drip everywhere. I still have that handkerchief to this day that meant something to me because it was just an extra step that my mom thought about because not only that but she also made me special hand gloves for that day too but she knew that if they got too wet for me that I'd probably want to take them off. And she did the same thing for uh, my brother's wedding as well, that she had made me special hand gloves that would match my uh, bridesmaid dress. So, and of course we had the little handkerchief for that too, because it's very easy to hide a handkerchief to make it look like it's just wrapped in with a bouquet. Thank you, mom. Appreciate the small things that go for that. <laughs> Someday I would absolutely absolutely love to get the surgery. It could be different nowadays. I mean, it could be an easier one than what it was back then, but oh dear God, like the surgery and what it was, was just seems scary. Somebody told me that now they can just do the surgery where they can just, I mean, it still sounds complicated and scary, but basically it's, it's clipping your nervous system that tells your brain where to sweat and whatever it is, it's an imbalance in the nervous system. So the original, original surgery that I knew of was that they would cut in through your armpit area and they would work their way to your nervous system to where it would cut off the part that basically was an imbalance that told your nervous system that where you were sweating. My cousin, she had the surgery, but my cousin, if you remember from earlier that I mentioned that she also had hyperhidrosis, hers was even worse than what mine is. Like mine's, mine's bad, mine's very bad. Hers was so bad though that hers would literally make her skin peel and it would smell like rotten flesh. Like mine, at least it doesn't smell. Hers would have this horrendous scent to her but me understanding and knowing like what she was going through, all of us would try to support her and help her in any way. Well, she was one of the ones where her parents got her the Botox treatments. So of course she told me how painful it was. I want to say that back then when they were getting it, I think my aunt told me like it was like 200 bucks per treatment that she was going. Them, they did it because of the fact hers was actually painful. And like I said, it actually smelled, but I even wanna say that they went like at least twice a month, if not once a week. So I can't imagine spending that amount of money on Botox. I get it for what the circumstances were, but she ended up getting the surgery. Well, the scary part was, was that my poor cousin, when she got the surgery, had a very bad reaction to the anesthesia and we almost lost her. So I have never in my entire life had surgery, knock on wood. But obviously if I make this decision to get this, I don't know how my body would react to anesthesia. And anything that I inherit is very strong on my dad's side of the family, quite obviously. So if she had a reaction to the anesthesia and how much her and my like genes are so much alike, as you can imagine, one of my fears is that I could die on the table. You can just tell I'm just so overjoyed with uh, trying this surgery as much as it would help me out. So I'm gonna try the uh, opal essence. This one's a gorgeous color. My cousin, who we had almost lost, so my fear is going on to that table, it would be a wonderful thing to where if I didn't have to worry about the hyperhidrosis anymore, but it, it's a real fear of like, you know, the thought process of someone 
could die on the table. I've known plenty of people. Uh, there's been recent ones with famous people who have unfortunately passed away because of an allergic reaction to anesthesia. Or yeah, I would love to get the surgery. I would love to treat it because it's not a cure, unfortunately. But you know, I like living too. So I definitely need to do a lot more investigating. Well, the other problem and process would be also um, money. There are programs that I could go into to help raise funds to be able to afford this a lot more because let's face it um having a house mortgage car loans student loans don't really have a lot of spending money and so especially for surgery for something that i would want to do it's something that i would have to work up to be able to afford the last thing i need to do is stab myself in the eye while trying to do makeup and get ready with me, as entertaining as I'm sure it would be, as long as I don't make a hot mess of it. So we move into, of course, college years and dealing with hyperhidrosis and the fact that because of my life as a kid, being completely awkward as hell, unfortunately, when you become an introvert, you kind of stuck in that. You don't just work out of it, especially if you're still dealing with the exact same problem that kind of made you an introvert in the first place. So, sparkle. Kind of going for a more shiny look anyways. The funny part is, is I'm, I'm making this video first, but I'm planning on filming another one with Arcanon but that one will probably be the one loaded before this one, but it's gonna turn into a cosplay later. Once again, you will see it later and understand. I hate talking to people that I don't know and being open. And of course in college, you really don't have that choice, especially when Arcanon and I went to NIU and we went to art school and just me having to get out of my comfort zone and to talk to people and it's not the easiest thing definitely not the easiest thing and so this year has been a huge learning curve for me and breaking out of my comfort zone especially dealing with all the drama and crap that i had to deal with my friends because dear god the amount of drama that because arcanon and i had made the decision to move in with a fellow friend that we figured, oh, we'll move in with her and her boyfriend into her townhouse. Now, mind you, we originally had no intentions of doing that. And because we knew their relationship was kind of rocky, it turned into one of those where she's like begging us, like, come and live with us. We're going to the same school. Like we can totally save some money and you guys don't have to move into marriage dorm and da 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 da. And, you know, kind of at first, it's like, yeah, this kind of sounds like a decent idea, but what happens if you two get into a fight and you break up and then Arcanon and I are left in this awkward position? She kept promising and guaranteeing to us. She's like, no, everything's totally going to be fine. We're happier than ever, blah, 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 talks us into it. And dear God, biggest mistake of mine and Arcanon's life. <laughs> that will probably, for that full story, will probably have to be like a story we talk about. Now, mind you, this is the same girl that I was talking about in my very, very first video of Luxy Charms. The friend that I flat out said that I should have learned and known from before because she pulled shit like this before. Well, this was the shit that I'm talking about. Well, we moved in with her. <laughs> their perfect little relationship that they had and that they were perfectly fine and no problems she was already cheating on him like the day that she promised us and told us that nothing was wrong and nothing was going to happen she was already cheating on this guy great friend by the way so obviously that goes downhill like i said i'll save that one for another full story but so <laughs> 
and we stopped being friends with her and didn't trust her and stopped being friends with her boyfriend at the time because of the incident that happened. Arkanon and I needed to start making new friends. Well, I had originally been in the art history program and I was miserable. I hated it. I hated the instructors. I hated how pompous everybody was. Uh, they weren't helpful. And of course, all my classes were extra weighted, moved into where Arkanon and I both focused on the art field. It's when I kind of started learning to come out of my shell was learning from actual instructors who were artists from Chicago. Of course, you can imagine still with having hyperhidrosis and that, but was able to learn to put that into my art and to focus it into it. So I started doing poor painting, which kind of makes me sad because I have an abundance of poor paintings, but of course it's not done as crafty ideas as what is popular nowadays. So I should have gotten into the field and started pushing to sell mine and I'd be ahead of the game by now. I mean, I guess I could turn around and sell them now, but Arcanon and I have gone through a lot of things in our life and me dealing with hyperhidrosis was the biggest one, but I wouldn't be able to do most of the things in my life if it wasn't for him because he helps to motivate me and to push me and encourages me even no matter how uncomfortable i am he keeps telling me that you know you can do this we move into making costumes and cosplays so me learning to do makeup and especially for sewing that's why you don't see me do a lot of sewing or making my own costumes because you know what trying to sew or even use a sewing machine while dealing with my sweaty ass hands really isn't the easiest thing to use. Working in retail, not the easiest, especially when learning how to work at a register, work with the public and cash and all that fun shit. Finally was getting to that age where I finally was stopping to care what anybody else thought. And from everything that I learned from college, I easily became manager material. So I became a night manager at the local grocery store that I worked at. Working in retail and being a night manager gave me way more confidence than that. Well, then I worked into the bank and I have never had a more stressful job in my life. Well, retail is pretty bad and dealing with the public is pretty bad because let's face it, uh, people are getting pretty awful out there. And there's so many, so many as they call them Period. out there. And uh, yeah. Those women can get in the hole and they can stay there. Me going to the bank job though, one of the funniest things is that I like to say is the fact that I never had a single gray hair in my life until I started working at the bank. So that should tell you right there. The last couple of years have taught me the most and it's only when I get like overly nervous, a lot of anxiety is when it gives me problems because the longer I kept working and doing this, even in front of this ring light and everything, uh, my hands stopped sweating. So yay. But yeah, I want to thank you all for joining me and getting ready with me. Obviously this look is going to change a little bit because once you see the cosplay, but like I said, that video is going to come before this one. So if you're watching this one and haven't watched the other one, I mean, it doesn't really matter what order you watch it in, but this will be transformed into... Da, 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 da. I am doing a tiger cosplay because, of course, you know, it is the year of the tiger. I just wanted to do something inspired for the year and hopefully we have a good year this year. Once again, thank you for joining me on another Luxie Charms and... Uh, getting ready with me. Sorry if I'm a hot mess and gonna clean it up a bit. And like I said, it's gonna change and gonna look a lot different. But hopefully able to learn a little bit with me about the things I've experienced with my hyperhidrosis and everything like that. Let me know in the comments below, like if you experience the same thing that I have, if you have hyperhidrosis or what kind of conditions and things have you had to deal with? If you were an introvert or a shy kid, like 
what experiences and things in your life kind of made you that way because I always wonder what would I have been like as a kid if I hadn't have had it because before my hyperhidrosis came into full bloom as I will call it I was a very outgoing kid. I was a tomboy. I was the type that I would get in your face and I would do all the sporty stuff and I would run as fast as the boys and unfortunately as soon as I hit fourth fifth grade when the hyperhidrosis started and you know it's just it's weird to think of what kind of little tiny things can happen in your life. Granted to me it's not a tiny little thing but you know what I mean. What can change your life forever? It's always going to bother me in some weird way, but it is something that I will continue to work on and to do my best to, and maybe someday I will get the surgery. Thank you, everybody, for joining me again, and you can find me on my uh, Twitter for Charcy Lux, and that's L-U-X-X-X, and you can also find me on my Instagram, which is Charcy87, and I also have my other YouTube channel, which is with my friend DC, and it's Little Channel of Horrors, where we talk about different horror movies that we love and enjoy. But thank you once again for joining, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!